Yes. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm John, and together with Mitch, Andrew, and David, we're excited to present you We Play Perilous, a real-time multiplayer game platform controlled by CrowdChat. Uh, we were really inspired by Twitch Plays Pokemon and the phenomenon of social gaming. I also think that creating games has a lot of valuable lessons for web development. Uh, so using the chat element on the right, we can both communicate with other players, uh, set our name through text commands, and issue directional commands to the character in the game. The goal of the game is to collect four pieces of totally not copyrighted treasure while avoiding obstacles and enemies. As with any democratic process, this is easier said than done. The game view, rendered using the phaser game engine, consumes state from the server and updates the world accordingly. All terrain, enemy placement, and key item data is held on the back end and delivered upon client connection, while player state is broadcasted as it, as it is changed. Um, our game development effort was focused in, on ensuring that this data was rendered accurately while still being efficient. As John stated earlier, one of our main goals in building this game was to have chat function as our primary user interface so we can maintain the social aspect of the game. In addition to posting messages and moving our hero, we've added some custom chat commands that allow you to send private messages, change your nickname, and interact with our chat bot. And of course, no chat is complete without a super sweet set of emojis. In addition to the chat, we've also incorporated a dashboard where you can look at how users are interacting with the, with the game. So you can see who's sending the most messages, uh, how many messages are hitting our server per minute, and the number of players playing this amazing game. Syncing up the state of the game to dozens of client devices in real time is not only one of the most important aspects of our design, but also one of the most difficult, with hundreds of inputs coming in per second. The back end of the game, which stores and emits the game state, had to be able to keep up. We didn't find any off-the-shelf solutions, so we decided to be bold and wrote Perilous's logic engine from scratch to our exact specifications. But don't take my word for it. See for yourself. I'm going to put in chat a link to the game deploy to live servers right now. The driving idea behind the engine is to make the game run as seamlessly and quickly as possible for as many client connections as the server can handle. So much is going on behind the scenes, including parsing the slew of incoming chat messages, checking the layout for valid movement, enemy collision, try, I mean, treasure collection, and more. Uh, thank you all for listening. We really, really enjoyed building We Play Perilous and look forward to everyone trying it out. All right, uh, questions. Questions for the crushers. So guys, you built a game. That's a bold move. Would you do it again? <laughs> Ask Mitch specifically. <laughs> I would. I would not make anyone else suffer this. <laughs> what, what was so challenging about it? Uh, Go ahead, Mitch. Oh, yeah. Uh, I know for my part, um, I worked mostly on the front end representation and let me, just synchronizing server state on the client uh, is very, very difficult. <laughs> like, uh, there's a reason why uh, the best companies that do this in the world are like Valve software, and that's it. <laughs> for me on the back end, um, you know, we like wrote it from scratch, right? So we took like blank JavaScript and just like wrote the whole thing, and everything was like really going pretty well until we have like multiple people trying to beat up the character at the same time. And then everything just went out the window and trying to make sure that all, all the clients saw the same thing all the time and that the server was like not catching on fire and all those things was challenging. Hmm. Any other questions? What goes into um, making the, the entire map? Cause I, I know it's from a, it's from, a game that already exists, but to make it um, interactable and just like a giant, one canvas sort of thing? How does that work? <clears throat> so Mitch is rendering data on the front end and he has like tiles that basically, you know, all the tiles chopped up from the original non-mentioned copyrighted game. And we actually constructed a giant JSON object that is actually the map. Um, I think the last time we checked, the JSON object was around 200,000 characters long. 
and it actually gets passed to the front end when the game initializes, and then the phaser engine builds it from that JSON object. Also, uh, we did not build it. Andrew built it because he is a crazy person. <laughs> By hand, no tools. <laughs> I was gonna, that was going to be my follow-up question. <laughs> a lot of coffee, a lot of coffee. <laughs> yeah.